we should be thinking about the what AI is 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 doing to our society and the implications of what we're looking for. And so the only I think part of this thinking has to involve people like yourself who are more intimate with the machine learning and artificial intelligence world is your how do you reconcile in your mind you said earlier that you think you can't imagine a galaxy where life and intelligence is not all over the place and if artificial intelligence is a natural progression for civilizations how do you reconcile that with with the absence of any information around us so any clues or hints of artificial behavior artificially engineered stars or colonization computer substrate transform planets anything like that it's it's uh extremely difficult for me it's like the, the the fermi paradox broadly defined is extremely difficult for me and the the terrifying thing is one thing i suspect is that we keep destroying ourselves. The probability of self-destruction with with advanced technology is just extremely high. That's why we're not seeing it. Mm-hmm. But then again, my intuition about, about why we haven't blown ourselves up with nuclear weapons, it, it's very surprising to me from a scientific perspective. <laughs> but yeah. It doesn't, given all the cruelty I've seen in the world, um, given the, the, the the power that nuclear weapons place in the hands of a very small number of individuals. It's very surprising to me we had to destroy our, ourselves. And it seems to be a very low probability situation we have happening here. Um, but, and then the other explanation is the, is the zoo, is the observation mm. that we're just being observed. That's the, that's the only other thing. It's just, it's so difficult for me. Um, I, of course, all of science, everything is very humbling. It would be very humbling for me to learn that we're alone in the universe. It would change, uh, you know what? It, maybe I do want that to be true because you want our, us to be special. That's why I'm resisting that thought mm. maybe. There's no way we're that special. There's no way we're that special. That's 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 where my resistance comes from. I, I would just say, you know, the specialness is something, we, we, in, implicitly in that statement, there's kind of an assumption that we are something positive. <laughs> like we're a gift to this planet or something, yeah. and that makes it special. But you know, it may be that intelligence is more of an is like we're like rats or cockroaches. We're an infestation of this planet. We're not we're not some benevolent property that the planet would a planet would ideally like to, to sure. have, if you can even say such a thing. But we are, we may be not only a, a generally a negative force for a planet's biosphere and its own survivability, which I think you can make a strong argument about, but we may also be a very persistent infestation that may, even in, you know, interesting thoughts on this, in the wake of a nuclear war, would that be an absolute eradication of every human being, which would be a fairly extreme event? Or would the candle of consciousness, as you might call it, the flame of consciousness, continue with some small pockets that would maybe in 10,000 years, 100,000 years, we'd see civilization reemerge and play out the same thing over again. Yeah, uh, that's certainly, but nuclear weapons aren't powerful enough yet. But yes, the uh, but to sort of push back on the infestation, sure, but the word special doesn't have to be positive. I just mean- I think uh, it, it tends to imply, but I, I take your point, yeah, but maybe, um, just maybe unique. extremely rare might be yeah, yeah. and I, that to me it just it, it's it's very strange for me to be cosmically unique it's just very strange i i i mean that we're <laughs> the only thing of this level of complexity in the galaxy just seems very strange to me that I, would, I, I would just yeah i as I said, I do think it depends on this classification. I think we, there is sort of, an, again, it's kind of buried within there as a subtext, but there is a, a classification that we're doing here that what we are is a distinct category of, of life, let's say in this case, when we're talking about intelligence, we are something that can be separated. Um, but of course we see intelligence across the animal kingdom in you know dolphins, humpback whales, um, octopuses, crows, ravens. And so it's quite possible that um that these are all manifestations of the same thing and, and we are not uh we are not a particularly distinct class except for the fact we make technology that's really the only difference with our intelligence and we we classify that separately 
but from a biological perspective to some degree it's really just all part of a continuum and so that's why I, I, when we talk about unique you're you're you are pay, putting yourself in a box which is distinct and saying this is the only example of things that fall into this box but that but the walls of that box may themselves be a construct of our own arrogance that we are something distinct yeah. uh, and uh but i was also speaking broadly for us meaning all life on earth that but then it's possible that there's all kinds of living uh, ecosystems in on other planets and other moons that just don't have interest in technological development mm -hmm. and may, maybe maybe technological development is the 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 parasitic thing that destroys the organism broadly. And then maybe that's actually one of the fundamental realities, whatever broad way to categorize technological development, that's that's just the parasitic thing that just destroys itself. 